and we put together a fast deal and a quick deal and a short deal of two fights Joe Cordina and Jose Zapeda if he comes through Cordina and then I believe he should move on and fight Tank but notable promoter Eddie Hearn has just dropped shocking hints that a potential matchup between Shakur Stevenson and Gervonta Tank Davies might be next with the possibility of this fight taking place being revived once again countless analysts and pros have stepped in to share their takes on how this much anticipated bout will go down including the former elite fighter Andre Dirrell who thinks that Shakur still might not be ready for a beast like Tank as he lacks a certain confidence in his skills which will make him vulnerable against a fighter like Gervonta, who is widely known for his extraordinary power and momentum. Yeah, because of the power, you know what I'm saying? I want to see how he deal with it. I want to see how he deal with it if he has to be there. So, like, we all know Shakur can move, right? So he can he can, he can stay away from danger. But when he got to be in the mix and Tank going to bring it to him, right, you know, I'm going to see how he got to deal with that power. When he get touched not once but two or three times bro, throughout the fight, bro, I want to see how he's going to react to it. And I don't think, I don't think he stands up to it, man. I think he takes the first few blows, but if he get caught clean too much, man, I see Tank, uh, you know. Darrell even warned Shakur that this time he might be facing a Tank who is even more tactical and ferocious than ever, based on how this bout has caused a lot of uproar among the fan base, urging the fighters to become the best versions of themselves to not only be done with this long overdue fight, but also to exert their dominance as the sole champion. Darrell stated, I believe Tank is going to try to make a statement early and I think he is going to turn it on and turn up earlier and more often than usual. Aware of the stakes, Darrell advised Shakur to find his footing early on in the fight by not allowing Tank to get too comfortable around the ring. However, according to Darrell, if the young fighter from Newark fails to deliver on it and continues on with his usual mediocre defensive approach, he might lose the opportunity to get an upper hand throughout the fight. Darrell said, Shakur gonna have to get his respect early by being there and countering off of on any mistakes Tank makes to let him know I'm going to be right there. He added, you have to break Tank down mentally first if that's possible and by that what you mean is to let a puncher know that you are right there to be punched. So try to hit me and don't miss and if you miss I'm taxing you. Andre Berto, who is another former professional fighter and a two-time welterweight world champion, pointed out how this fight will be a little slow-paced in the first few rounds based on the way both fighters usually approach their opponents with a reserved manner, in the beginning, to not only access the overall situation inside the ring, but also to adapt in accordance to the stance utilized by the opponent. You know what I would see? I would see I can see Tank at the beginning like he always does. Mm -hmm. You know, he always calculates the first three or four rounds. So I can see both of them not really doing much the first five rounds. But really just downloading what's in front of them. Both of them because I see Shakur, he's, you know, they see he's very, uh, you know, kind of skittish a little bit, you know, when it comes to him being in front of somebody. You know, he'll step back on something quick just to look at it and see what's going on and take and take a continue and try to download some sharing some contentious history with Shakur after his fight with Artem Berto once again seemed to throw snide remarks at Shakur emphasizing how he needs to modify his style to be more offensive if he wants to be taken seriously as his recent defensive style is not only predictable but also that it is extremely boring for the audience Berto stated Shakur we've seen his last few fights he fought a puncher and he will just stay on his back foot for a few rounds even though when you can easily see that if he walks up and brings his presence they can't touch him being on the same live as Berto Andre Ward agreed with his fellow fighter on how the first few rounds will be a tad bit slow due to Shakur's lack of aggressiveness however another point that he highlighted was that though the fighters might step back to assess the situation they must also make sure to remain alert for any surprise attacks because if they are caught by any of these jabs it might be enough to dismantle their confidence and focus throughout the fight Ward stated even in first three rounds four rounds when it seems like nothing going on if you are not mentally strong that's going to drain you because it's just the threat of him doing something which drains you expressing his confidence in Shakur Ward stated how though he might lack in some aspects when faced with a fighter like Tank Shakur is still a formidable opponent who can easily get the upper hand in the fight if he is not taken seriously by his opponent Ward also recalled how this might not be the first time that these two fighters have faced one another inside the ring as throughout their amateur days they have taken part in countless sparring sessions which though have been much different than an actual fight did aid the fighters in getting some crucial insight. Tank gonna have to be on point too. He got to be at his best too because, you know, Shakur is sharp, man. And, yeah. and no, for sure. He's the type of fighter that you let him get comfortable.
comfortable, he can make you look bad. You know what I mean? And Facts. What's, what, what's also interesting is they didn't spar too. So, you know, fighting is different. Smaller gloves, it's a live crowd. Mm -hmm. It's different pressure, but you know, you get an idea what, what that fighter's working Exactly. With. Moving on, Shakur Stevenson, who has recently embarked on a new journey with Matchroom, seemingly moved by the offers that Eddie Hearn presented, appears confident that this time he will finally get the bouts that he has long yearned for, including ones with prominent adversaries like Lomachenko, William Zapita, and Tank Davies. Expressing his eagerness, Shakur tweeted, I'm coming for everything I ever wanted. During his interview with the boxing legend Andre Ward, Shakur emphasized that at this point, point in his career, a fight with Tank will be the most noteworthy, given that both of them are the top contenders in the 135 weight division with a compelling rivalry that will bring in the most numbers. Shakur stated, We have got to fight at the end of the day. I know it's going to happen. I mean, I'm the best. He is the best. So you got two guys that are the best. How can you not fight? He added, I'm ready for it. He is ready for it. We both are in our primes. It can happen next. It can happen next year. It can happen whenever he says. Despite the ongoing hostility among the fighters, Shakur commended Gervonta Davies for his immaculate fighting skills and tactical prowess, which has only further enhanced after his years of fighting experience. To clarify his stance, Shakur looked back on Tank's last bout with Frank Martin, which concluded in a spectacular win for Tank by a knockout, further cementing his legacy as a tremendous fighter who utilizes his skills in such a way that it makes even a world-renowned fighter like Frank look like an amateur. Now nah, he's, he's strategic. He's setting guys up. He's been boxing since a little kid, just like I've been boxing since a little kid. And you can tell, like, with the experience. Even with his last fight with Frank Martin, you can see Frank Martin was more so an amateur. Like, the experience he got is not on the level of, like, Tank. And he just took off with experience. He let him waste his energy, gas him out. Yeah. <laughs> and then round eight, right. okay, it's time to go home. When would you like to see that fight happen? Whenever. With the same optimistic mindset, Shakur further divulged his future plans of joining the ranks of elites, such as Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Floyd Mayweather, claiming how soon he would be referred to as one of the best defensive-style boxers in history, based on his outstanding skills to deflect all sorts of attacks and to pick apart his opponents gradually. Shakur stated, I think I will go down as probably the best defensive fighter to ever do it. I want to be one of the best. I want to be in that goat mountain where you are sitting next to Pernell Whitaker, Floyd Mayweather, Weather, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Muhammad Ali. Though Shakur might be hopeful about this supposed new era, one thing he seems to undermine is that along with unprecedented attributes, these great fighters also possessed tremendous marketability skills and charisma outside of the ring which made them even more prominent to the general public, a skill that Shakur seems to lack so far in his professional career, which is something heavily criticized, especially since his last fight with Artem Harutyunyan where regardless of the blustering claims made by Shakur, Shakur, even his own hometown audience was left discontented. Despite taking accountability and trying to learn from his mistakes, Shakur blasted his critics, stating that this is just because of a certain bias against him, as other eminent fighters like Lomachenko and Usyk have also underperformed in various fights, but have been left unscathed by the media and the fans. I would get it if this applied to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, if dumb standards applied to the Lomachenkos, of the world, or, or, or the like Usyk, the Usyk of the world. The Loma, you feel like they don't? No. Meanwhile, it appears as if this explanation has only further fueled the fire, as it is now directed at Shakur's new promoter, Eddie Hearn, as according to numerous claims. The fans perceive that the upcoming fight between Shakur Stevenson and Joe Cordina, both of whom are promoted by Eddie, is nothing but a cheap ploy to boost Shakur's popularity amidst the ongoing hostility. Trying to justify his decision, Eddie recently sat down with IFL TV to clarify how the debate about this fight just being a gimmick is absurd, as Joe is a former IBF champion with an exceptional skill set which indicates that he is not an easy opponent who can be brushed off that easily, even for a fighter like Shakur Stevenson. Eddie stated, This is a serious fight. It makes me laugh when I hear people go, Shakur Stevenson against Joe Cordina. I'm telling you now, this is a dangerous fight for Shakur Stevenson. Eddie then emphasized how although he might favor Shakur more in this fight based on his expertise as a pound-for-pound -pound great, he is also 
also rooting for Joe as he is an excellent fighter who is looking for a chance at redemption by going after one of the best fighters in the division, who is renowned for his outstanding defense. Eddie said, The only kind of fight that Joe is going to get up for is moments like this. That is why this is a dangerous fight. Yes, of course I'm going to champion Shakur Stevenson. I think he's a pound-for-pound -pound talent and I think he's a favorite in the fight. He added, But if you're not ready, you're going to have your hands full because Cordina can fight. He's got the bit between his teeth. He's thinking, I'll show you. This is a great fight. On the other hand, in the middle of this debate, Eddie has also disclosed his dealings with Shakur, stating how although the original plan is to orchestrate only two big fights for Shakur, namely with Cordina and Zapita, it is about time that an even bigger fight involving Tank Davies is made. And we gave her a fast deal and a quick deal and a short deal of two fights, Joe Cordina and Jose Zapata, if he comes through Cordina. And then I believe he should move on and fight Tank, but... Further highlighting the importance of a Tank fight for Shakur's career, Eddie stated that it is important for the 135 weight class to have bouts and unification fights between the world champions like Tank and Shakur as it will not only garner immense popularity, but it will also finally settle the debate about the best fighter in the weight class, which has been a matter of contention for far too long. Eddie said, We make our own moves. We're not chasing Tank. We're chasing greatness, but that comes with Tank because he's an unbelievable fighter. Eddie appeared confident that after the two-fight deal with Shakur is done, they can still continue their partnership and decide to move to 140 pounds to fight against champions like Devin Haney and Liam Pero, with a vision of becoming a much-coveted four-division world title holder. Eddie stated, I think he can move to 140, he can fight Liam Pero, he could fight Devin Haney, but right now the focus is 135 and doing the job against Cordina, doing the job against Zapata, and like I said after we've done our job, Shakur against Tank will be the biggest fight in boxing. Also thinking that this fight with Tank would be excellent, famed trainer and coach, Robert Garcia stated how this new deal with Eddie might be quite beneficial for Shakur Stevenson, in terms of getting the fights that he has always wanted but could not get his hands on due to the involvement of politics in the game. Oh, but it's uh, business, honestly, business, uh, politics. The main point that Robert might be reflecting on here is the highly publicized debacle between Top Rank and Shakur that went on a few months ago after his contentious leave from the company due to them not orchestrating big fights for Shakur despite having multiple opportunities to do so. Elated about seeing a potential fight with Tank and Shakur, Robert pointed out how considering the stage that both the fighters are at in their careers, the time to organize this fight is optimal, as delaying it any further might take the chance away from not only the fighters themselves, but also from the fans. Robert also added on how this fight will most certainly be the biggest in the division. I, I, that's the one I want to see. Hopefully they do put it together, man. Uh, I think Tank will rather go another direction. However, before Shakur decides to move on to fight Gervonta Davies, he must fulfill the recent commitment that he has made with Eddie Hearn in fighting Cordina and Zepeda, with Cordina being his most important opponent, as he will not only set the pace for Shakur's supposed comeback, but if Shakur ends up garnering a superb win this time, he might even be successful in mending his torn-up reputation. Understanding the significance of this bout, Joe Cordina also appears to be pumped up about this fight on October 12th, stating how though he might be overlooked as he is the apparent underdog in this fight going against a current world champion, he is going to give his best and will prove how he is not someone who should be undermined so easily just because he is no longer a world champion himself. Joe stated, They're overlooking me, 100%, but I don't mind that. There's nothing for me to lose. It's all to gain for me. I just have to go out there and leave nothing to chance and leave it all in the ring. He added, I perform better when I'm backed up against the wall and I've got a point to prove when my opponent is high level, which Shakur is at the highest level. Now that is going to make me perform out of my skin, and I've always done that. Looking forward to this fight between Cordina and Shakur, boxing trainer, Greg Hackett shared his rather distinct opinion on how the continuous demeaning comments directed towards Shakur, since his last couple of fights should be ignored as the fighter is now trying to get back on track after signing a deal with Matchroom, which is a noble thing to do. Greg stated after Shacker's last performance they put sh** on his name, and what Eddie Hearn is doing is bringing his name back out of the ground. I mean we are going to give you somebody you should cook, go ahead and cook, 
From there, I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to talk my sh Greg also pointed out how the main priority for Shakur at the given moment is his fight with Joe Cordina, which many people might think is a mismatch considering how Joe is not only coming off a knockout loss after his fight with Anthony Cacase, but also because he is not that prominent in the lightweight division for him to get a fight with a world champion and former Olympic medalist like Shakur Stevenson. Despite these facts, Greg still believes that Joe should not be taken so lightly, and that it is important that Shakur enters this fight with a more aggressive approach, where he does not shy away from taking certain risks as this will help him grow as a fighter and will aid in his dream of becoming one of the best fighters ever. Greg stated, Joe is to be respected as a fighter. He is not a chump, but the thing is he is not the favorite clearly against Shakur, but Shakur just has to go in there and do what he does to the maximum massive whooping. Further clarifying his point, Greg stated how there is no doubt that Shakur is one of the greatest fighters of this era with an unprecedented skill set, but it is also important that once in a while he utilizes these skills in such a way that he is able to scrutinize and violently corner his opponent, especially if it is someone like Gervonta Davies. He added, I'm looking for a little bit of a risk taker, that's what I'm looking for. I know that the skills are going to be there. I ain't going to talk about that. I know the defense is going to be there. Let take a few risks, that's what I'm looking for to go in there and bite down. Giving his take on the possible future plan that Shakur might adopt after his fight, Greg stated how it is important for Shore to end this fight in such a way that it garners positive praise from not only his fans but also from the boxing community as a whole. He also called out Shakur's critics, stating that picking relatively easy fights is something that has been a part of the industry for a very long time, so blasting a fighter for doing it for the sake of getting back his reputation is nothing but hypocritical. Everybody else doing it. I mean, let the boy do what he's doing. I, I think it, I think it's for something better after this. So let's get past Cordina. Let's do what we got to do. Stay focused. Let's beat Cordina. Let's look like something. Let's, let's give the people something to talk about. All right. And let Eddie work his magic. Barry Jones, who is a former WBO super featherweight world champion, also thinks that Shakur will have the upper hand in this fight based on his sheer experience in this weight class and the overall magnitude of skills that he possesses compared to Cordina. Despite being a Welsh fighter himself, Barry might not be on his fellow fighter's side as he thinks that Cordina will have a very hard time based on his continuous downhill streak since last year, which might have some lasting effects on his upcoming performance with Shakur. Would you like a fight for, between Cordina and Shakur Stevenson? I'd never see it. I, I wouldn't put Joe a favour, of course. You don't see Shakur Stevenson would be a massive favour. So I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a realistic fight that Joe would win. But he, Joe's very skillful, and, and he ticked all the boxing against Rakovov. He showed that power against Ogawa. He showed that he showed the resilience, the, the work rate, the chin, all those things you need to be a champion. So you know, he's a hard man to beat, and he has the great skills as well. But Shakur Stevenson is a little bit special. So he underperformed in his last performance, but he still won at the counters. So, but it, listen, but you want to be in the big, big, you want to be a world champion again, but you don't want to take these routes all the time. Regardless of this, Barry still seemed to applaud Joe for his ambitious approach of taking on a world champion, with the majority of the odds staked against him, stating how at the end of the day you have to take certain risks if you want to be taken seriously, which is something that goes for Shakur as well because he too should leave his bubble to fight bigger and tougher guys like Gervonta and Lomachenko. So in the end, what are your thoughts about these shocking claims made by Eddie Hearn? Do you think that he will succeed in his quest to orchestrate these big fights for Shakur? Or do you think Shakur's possible lackluster performance against Cordina might end up crushing these dreams? Make sure to tell us about your thoughts in the comments below and if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe to our channel.